Well, good morning, and welcome to my morning blog. Not vlog, blog, or podcast. It's uh, the 28th today, 28th of July. It's just gone 745 and um, I've been up since six o'clock, actually, because a mummy had to go into work early today, and I was taking it. First question I want to cover, which has come through to me from a couple of family friends, is why are you doing a, a blog now, Simon? Why are you doing this as well as your video? What's what Have you not got enough on your mind or something? Are you sort of doing <laughs> doing all these different things? What's the issue here? Well, I guess I missed out on the on the whole blog era when it started, um, because vlogs, you know, video logs became came in a bit later as YouTube got more more efficient, um, whereas blogging started a little bit before that, and and putting together quality podcasts. Um, I've I've thought about. I I guess it's how one can describe situations uh, using just uh, sound without having to have visual effects as well. And I I I I want to do both. I'm going to be doing vlogs and I'm going to be doing blogs. <laughs> um, the reason that I thought the advantage of having blogs in my repertoire of communication, let's call it is I just thought, well, as I go on travels, as I get into the densest jungle of the Philippines, there could be occasion when I just won't have the capacity to record and edit a, a 4K film and then get it across out to, to the rest of the world quickly and efficiently. And then this means of... of getting some communication out there will work and will probably work just as well. It's all about how one sets it up and does it. You've got to get your, still got to get your sound right and you've got to get your description right as to how you get your story across. Because it's all about telling a story, isn't it? It's all about how you tell the story. It could be just a very small amount of information, but it's how you get that across that message and how you move it so yeah I, i'm just finding i use this facility blogging in it takes it's much easier to put together it's quicker to put together um providing the content is good i mean that's this content must still carry the message and carry it well in my opinion for it to work all right moving on next question <laughs> Um, you'll note I, I sent out on Facebook and on my WhatsApp channel um, the video that Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, made about getting his weight down and to get that message on reducing, reducing um, obesity in the UK. And you recall I talked about it a couple of times as well. Um, now, the media made a point before that message went out from the Prime Minister over the weekend. They were talking about the government and the Prime Minister are going to be uh, talking about, the you know, we must get our weight down. We've got to do this, otherwise it's COVID-19 is going to kill us and all the rest of it. And it was quite brutal, frightening tactics that the press were getting across as this is how the government are going to take their stance. And um, yes, I mean, look, COVID and the pandemic pandemic is very important. But it was the usual story, uh, you know, of the press trying to make headlines and trying to sell a story. And it was no more than that because I listened to what Boris Johnson had to say, and it was an edited um, uh, script where he was out in a large garden walking his 
dog on the lead and he was talking about his problem with his weight and how he was a stone heavier when he went into intensive care with COVID and, and, and the benefits of losing weight can give you and it was just an encouraging message. It was no more than that. There was no pressure. There was no threat. There was no, none of this, you better do it like, you know, we're a nanny, a nanny state type of approach. No, I thought it was just a genuine, sincere, good quality message that Boris put out there. And I think it was good common sense. And why would anyone want to argue with it? I mean, he's even admitting himself that he carries a bit of weight and he always has problems in managing his weight. So let's not, you know, go beyond that. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's sensible advice. It's been out there many times before. And I think those of us that carry that little bit of weight know it ourselves, that we should, if we can, try and do something about it. Whether we do or not, is it's our call. Of course it is. Uh, Whether we can do anything about it is our call. But I think we mustn't, you know, the press were making a big drama out of nothing by saying the government are going to be brutal and all the rest of it. And I think that was rubbish. That didn't come across at all. I think it was good sound advice, sensible advice. And I think we should all try and do something about it. I mean, I've been trying my hardest for the last couple of months myself. Um, with my the, my problem now is my I've just established my scales broken, so I don't know if I'm being effectively um, losing the odd pound or not. I'll have to get a new scale, which I'm going to be doing in the next few days, so that I can start monitoring my weight and seeing how we go. I think I think Richie she um, she. <laughs> She de- no, I can't say that. I was going to say she deliberately ensured the scales don't work for her own benefit, but I, I can't. I go no, I don't want to say that. That would be naughty, naughty Simon. Um, yes, going on, moving on with other things that have that are that we're talking about with health and the the whole process I've been talking about with healthy eating and putting the right kind of products in our diet um, again I'm listening on the radio this morning I've been listening to the CEO of Greg's Greg's the pie maker um, who who makes those fantastic sausage rolls I don't know if anyone here you know anyone obviously in the UK you'll know what I'm talking about with Greg's they, they're they're a, they're a pie shop that are basically in every town high street um, and shopping mall and they make exceedingly good sausage rolls. Uh, those of you that are partial to a sausage roll in the UK will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, he was put under pressure for his product product not being good for for people. I mean, his sausage rolls, as well as his his donuts, of course. Because um, apart from sausage rolls and steak pies and chicken pies and pizza slices they also do a range of donuts and and other cakes and pastries as well so they do they do everything that's not really very good for us i mean they they do a few things that are sort of okayish being good for us but most of their stuff you would you would you would limit yourself to it probably once a week like a sausage roll once a week and this is what he was saying, basically. You know, it's the, the sort of food that they that they put out there for the public is 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 food that they people will enjoy. They want it to be product that they can people can enjoy, but not overdo it. They're not recommending people eat sausage rolls and donuts every day, but they're saying they're there. They also work on their sausage rolls to ensure you know, the fat content and the salt content are are watched and reduced all the time. And he made a point that the sausage roll that they produce today does not have the fat content or the salt content that the sausage roll did sort of 10 years ago. Um, and yes, I can honestly say that is the case because the sausage rolls they made 10 years ago 
were, in my opinion, far better than the sausage rolls today. Um, <laughs> and it's obviously due to that, possibly. Look, they're not bad. They've all, they've always had a good reputation for their sausage roll. It's their earner. It's the money. It's the thing. It's the product, the key product that gets people into Greg's. They've built their business on their sausage roll, the Greg sausage roll. And in fact, you can buy Greg sausage rolls in other supermarket chains like Iceland as well. You can buy them frozen as well, in fact, yes. So, look, he was just making his point that a little bit of what's bad for you is okay as long as you don't have it very often. You know, it's part of what life's all about, isn't it? We don't want to become just lettuce munchers, do we? Um, I don't think we would, we would we would go too well on just lettuce either. So that balance is always very important. And it's, I guess, about how we take it all on board. Yes, have a, if you enjoy a sausage roll, have one, but don't have it more than once a week. It's the same. It's like moderate in it, moderation in everything, isn't it? It's moderation in gin and tonics. Yeah, in the evening, once or twice a week, have a gin and tonic, but don't drink a bottle a night. That's very <laughs> goes without saying. And um, yeah, I think it means that there's more. There's a more. There's more to be done. Moving on, and this is something else the government have been involved in and criticised for by the media mainly, and obviously a certain selection of society, has been this whole issue on taking what the press are saying, drastic action on quarantine for people coming back from Spain. Because Spain have had some um, COVID spikes in certain parts of the country, particularly in the northern part of the country, our government have made a decision that, OK, anyone who's coming back from Spain now should go into quarantine for two weeks um, straight away. And, it, you know, it mustn't, as an as a, as a absolute strict lockdown. And they're, they're obviously saying it for a reason. Now, People are up in arms, and how can we do this? And Spain is got things under control, and what? Well, and the Spanish government are actually saying, no, no, you, you, you know, this isn't good for tourism, and we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be doing this as a British government. Well, look, you know, I'm sorry, but the the government is shot for not acting quickly enough, and then it's shot for acting too quickly in now in this particular case, and I just don't get it. You know, I, I mean, I think, first of all, I, I I, I just amaze that so many people want to go on holidays to Spain when we've still got a pandemic out there. And I appreciate that some of them book them a year in advance and whatever the case may, may be, but they must understand and appreciate that with the, the pandemic going on and, and countries now looking at trying to wrestle with second spikes and anything can happen anywhere that they're going to they're going to potentially get caught in situations and if they do obviously they'll have to pay the price of of quarantine and 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 disruption with their travel and potential risk of catching covid or giving it to another friend or close close relative or someone so it's out there, folks, and I don't see what the noise is all about. The government's reacting to something which they feel is right to protect public health in this country. I don't think we can do anything about it. I'll quote you other countries like, and it was again on the radio uh, today, Vietnam. They had a spot, I mean, they virtually have no daily cases of new, new, new infections for weeks and weeks, and they suddenly had, I think it was 16, 15 or 16 cases. So they immediately have a lockdown in the country for 16 cases. But you can understand that's how they keep their the severity of the disease quite low and under control. South Korea is another one. 
Actually, the Philippines is another one. I mean, the Philippines has 100 million plus people living in the country. They have relatively high um, um, infection rates. When I say relatively high, the average infection rate in the Philippines at the moment is around 1,600, 1,700 per day. And that's what it's been running like for the last couple of months. So infections are fairly high, particularly in in the cities like Manila. Um, and Manila's the main the main area which has got the infection. But they are in other cities in Cebu and Davo uh, Davo and and places as well. And then there's obviously a, small cases out in a few of the provinces. But the actual f- f- fatality rate. Despite the high population, the high population of a of a hundred million, the fatalities are under two thousand. They haven't even hit two thousand deaths yet, as as a result of COVID. Now people say that information can't be correct, but I tell you, it is correct. It is correct, and I can see it based on how serious. The government takes <coughs> controlling COVID. They they have very strict lockdowns per region. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they at their regions they call them barangays, and every barangay has strict control. So you go from one region into another. You literally go through a border. You go through a check a checkpoint where you are checked, temperature checked. Your your you're literally washed down, you're given gel to, you know, wash yourself. Your car is sprayed, or your vehicle. (coughs) I mean, they have very strict controls. And you can see it out and about. The social distancing is is taken very seriously. Everyone has to wear masks in public. Inside or outside, you wear a mask when you're in a public place. You don't you know, you can't just walk like in our country. We only have to wear the mask when we're inside public places, like like in retail stores. But you know, you don't have to wear a mask if you're outside. Yes, social distancing still applies. Yes, hand washing still applies. Of course it does. But we are we we, we don't actually have the same disciplines dished out to us by our government that a lot of these countries have in in other parts of the world now some people will say we should that's you know it's a bad thing that we don't have these strict disciplines others say we, you know, we shouldn't have these strict rules it you know we should we should use common sense now i'm i'm much of the view being british <laughs> And this is my view. Now, everyone should be treating this in a sensible way, as Boris is trying to make make that point, as is the government. He doesn't want us to become a nanny state where we are told you have to do this and you have to do that. (coughs) He's very careful not to do that. And he's trying to use... He's he's treating us like grown ups, in other words. You know, please wear a mask when you go into a retail shop. It is the law; we're making it the law. But you know, we don't want the police to get involved in this. Please do it. And I think ninety percent of people, ninety five percent of people, out there, are wearing their masks. <clears throat> Many were wearing masks before they had were told they had to wear masks. Quite honestly, so. Generally, most people are sensible and respect the advice and and do it because they don't want to risk health to their friends, or relatives or themselves. They don't want to see a second spike. But then you get the 10% who are, all I can describe them as idiots. And these are the ones the press rally around and get the most opinions from. As if we want to hear these opinions. Why do I want to hear the opinion of someone who refuses to wear a mask and is going on holiday to Spain 
regardless. <laughs> I t- and I must listen to the, what he has to tell me rather than what 90% of the population are saying. You know, that, that's what I get annoyed with when I listen to, to, to the media, quite honestly, and the BBC and Sky and, and look at the newspapers. They, you know, they, they love to dramatise the event. So let's, rather than let's get the opinion of all these sensible people over here, let's rather interview the idiot who, who is going to give us a better story. That's the way it seems to work in our environment. You don't get that in the Philippines. In the Philippines or in Vietnam, you have total crackdown. You know, you get, you get in a situation where you don't have choice. You can't go from A to B. You can't, you can't go, f- you know, you just can't move around in certain cases. And they've only got a, a few um, fatalities compared with us. But that's what they're doing. They're doing it to that extent. They're treating people like children. Now, that's the way their culture is. That's the way the culture of that environment works. So I'm, not, I'm not condemning it. If you're in that environment, that's how it works. But I don't think the the UK public want to be treated like children by the government. I don't think they need to be treated like children by the government. I think they need to be treated like sensible, well-balanced adults that know what they have to do to prevent things getting worse or going bad. But if they do go bad or do go worse, they also know what they have to do because they believe in the advice. Yeah, I, now tell me I'm wrong, folks. Tell me I'm wrong. And I will shut up and I'll go and talk about something else. Anyway, that's it. I've got to get myself organised. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have a video going out today. I will try. I've got quite a bit of work on. I've got... Um, now, apart from the the stuff I'm working, preparation and getting ready on the Philippines farm and production on Philippines farming methods, I've got fruit juice coming across from South Africa, which I'm trying to uh, get cleared out of uh, customs at the moment in at the London port. I've got projects going on a software app which my nephew is involved in driving but I've I'm I'm assisting him with that at the moment in getting that finalized I've got another I've got another uh uh business model being worked on now in terms of electric vehicle trailers with another young gentleman who is going to get back to me in a week's time um we've got some of something else i haven't even told my partner in is is a is a whole range of other products i'm developing in the philippines um which i'd like to see in the retail sector here and i'm offering it to a particular retailer that i'm not going to mention the name of yet um but paul knows them <laughs> and that is i'm looking at a range of soap and hand gel and shampoo and facial products for ladies and gents and perfumes and scents bottled and canned and packaged in a very good quality um method and landing in the market here at a very very affordable prices created by ourselves actually we're we're not we're not taking on anybody else's product we it's something that we are creating ourselves uh through the magic wonders of technology and 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 clever packaging so that's where we are with that, and I'll give you more information on it in a, in a, in, a, in a few days' time. Um, anyway, got to go. Talk to you again soon. Bye bye. <laughs>